Today, around 600 planes will take off from Heathrow. Good line up, runway 36, climb straight ahead to 3,000 feet for radar vectors, speed 085. On this flight, Senior First Officer Dave Warner and Captain Lee Reynolds will be flying under extreme pressure. Speedbugs D rate trim. No change. Flaps. For the next four hours, their every move will be closely watched. Transponder is on. Exterior lights are on. Are we ready? Checklist complete. Uh, Speedbird 085 is ready for departure. Around 600 planes will also arrive at Heathrow today. One of them is carrying a passenger with a suspected heart attack. Power set. See. 80 knots. Speed at 85, we've abandoned with an engine uh, fire warning on the right hand engine. Can we have emergency services and can you see any fire from where you are, sir? Senior Cabin Crew member, report to the flight immediately, please. CSD here, sir. Uh, we've stopped with a right engine problem initially, a fire warning. Can you right. see anything from where you are? No, I didn't see anything either side. Uh, the crew has reported nothing unusual. Good. Right, but when the emergency services are here, they'll follow us in and we'll just clear on the right and take some guys Okay, sir. Okay, that's fine. That's fine, gentlemen. Good. Playing cabin services director is Douglas Ord, senior training captain with British Airways. You sweating nicely, Dave? Yeah, it's hard work. It's 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 spy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it does. Right, Dave and Lee will be sweating some more over the next few hours. They're taking their six monthly flying test. Speedbird 085 may be a simulator, but if a pilot fails to fly it, he loses his license. You want me to hey, did you order a harder? Yeah, it's been ordered. Yeah, I just rung them as well. They've heard me, I think. I couldn't, I couldn't... Air India's passengers have had a 10-hour flight from Delhi, and they'll be anxious to get off the plane. But before they do, Alan and John want to get on. We've got to get on first. Okay, fine. Yeah, I understand, I understand. Now you're good to going, you're not going to wake up. We want to get on the aircraft to see the passengers. Then once everybody, we we'll see the passenger, you can let everybody off. Because it's a heart attack, I'm sorry, you know, it's... Go ahead. Go on, sir. Come to Zill. In the confined space of the Air India cabin, John and Alan have set up a drip, administered oxygen, and are monitoring their patient's heart. And please request all passengers to keep the aisle clear on the left hand side of the. A mobile lift has arrived to take the patient off the plane, but it's come to the rear door of the aircraft, and John and Alan's patient is 20 rows away. Excuse me, please, Alan, that needs flush. No, it's all right, I'm going down to. Patient, go. drip and Excuse monitor me. must all be manoeuvred together. Rest on top, just for a sec. It's too heavy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. God. This is a hard way of doing things. Oh. Bumping over the last bit, oh, boys. It. You turn it, turn it. Oh. That's it. Hold it. Oh, hold on, hold on. That's it. Suddenly get this side. Yeah. My left. That's it. Hold on a minute. Right. Nick, you're going to take that for me. Right. Oh, up we go. Right. Oh, that exerted all my strength, that did. Oh. Remind me never to use a longboard again. <laughs> Ellie. It's OK, sweetheart. Right? You can, you can hear us. OK, we've not done nothing to you. We've just checked your blood pressure. And we're going to take you down to the hospital, OK? Bit of a mystery at the moment, until we get her downstairs and do a few other things. Uh, basically, she just collapsed on the aircraft like this. Nobody knows nothing. Flight 085 has dropped 25,000 feet in three minutes. Lee can breathe more easily. Senior cabin crew member reports the flight like in the Yes, sir. You must have gathered that we have a pressurisation problem. Is everybody all right? Yeah, they're fine. Yeah, they must right. have some ear damage down the back yeah, there somewhere. Yeah, all the oxygen dropped out, as they should. Fine. Well, we're below 10,000 feet now. We're going down into Geneva. We'll be on the ground in about 10 minutes' time. OK. We'll ask for medical assistance. Uh, no, the Swiss will probably sort it out quite well. OK, so we'll do. But there's more trouble in store. Speed with 85. We have an RBR of 200 metres. 
thanks to Douglas, Geneva's become fog-bound. Can you squeeze my hands, both sides, really tight? Can you? Ellie can now get the specialist monitoring she needs. We'll sit you up, Ellie. There you go, Ellie. You're at the hospital now. I'll tell you then. QNH cross-checked. The Geneva runway is somewhere just ahead, but it's completely shrouded in fog. Received. Now, there are three or four left-hand turns. I right. think we'll end up about the centre of the runway. Yeah. on Charlie or Delta, but we probably won't be able to see which one we're on. Once over the runway, Lee must decide whether to land or abandon the attempt. He'll be just 14 feet above the ground when he makes the decision. 50 above. Decide, land. The autopilot. 60 knots. First four aisle, thank you. Speedbird 085 has landed on the runway. Um, uh, which exit? It's realistic enough to stress you mentally. So, yeah, we're quite tired, I think, because we came out of there. <laughs> we looked less less young less, than when we went in. Yes. We, we, we lost a year or two <laughs> in the meantime. Thinking, what have I forgotten? Yeah. Mm. What yeah. should I have done? Or should we be going faster now? Should we have done this? Should we have done that? Even if you have a rough idea of what's going to happen, it, it's quite upsetting wearing this oxygen mask. It's very uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. horrible noise with the passage of oxygen makes it destroys your thought process, really, doesn't it? We're not used to having those things on our faces, but... We'd be in some pain, I think, with our ears yes. and the rushing of air. It would be. And it would be quite uncomfortable, yeah. but that's about the only lack of realism in the whole exercise. Lee and Dave's brief respite is over. Douglas is all too aware of the pressure they're under. As a working captain with British Airways, he has to take the same tests himself. Frightening. Frightening. I know we know we're in a, in a simulator, but it actually is very realistic. And, and they know somebody's watching them and they're under a lot of pressure to succeed. And the whole environment is quite threatening and quite frightening. In this virtual aviation world, the final crisis is about to be created. Meanwhile, Medic 5 is responding to a call from a pilot in real difficulties. All we know at the moment is we've got a full emergency on the, air, on the airport. The important thing is to get there, find out what's happening, and then if there is a problem, then you can worry about it. Every available support vehicle from both on and off the airport has been called to the scene. It's a full emergency, one of the classes of full emergency. We've got an aircraft coming in with hydraulic problems. I mean, the police are already on scene at a rendezvous point. We've got our emergency control vehicle out, just in case, plus also Alpha 401 from the main station. Okay. There's no way of knowing how severe the incoming aircraft's problems might be. There's a full turnout for every such incident, however often they happen. Quite normal, <laughs> sometimes three, four, five times a week, mainly for things like hydraulic problems or, you know, and sometimes it's just faulty lights that come up on the aircraft. But in case it's not, obviously everybody's got to be here ready just to be on the safe side. While Lee and Dave make their routine checks, Douglas is planning a mechanical failure. It's a bit sneaky, this, but they'll have uh, a fuel leak and it's going to be a really big quick.